Okay guys, so after our last video, I had a lot of questions about exactly how do I go into my BIOS and enable these tunings such as PBO, Eco Mode, and the custom one that I provided. Now, for a lot of you, this may be simple stuff, and if it is, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to click off, this video isn't for you. But we do have a lot of novice to intermediate level users that aren't quite comfortable with this. So I'm gonna take you through really quick. This will be a short video of how to get into your BIOS and how to make some of these changes. So the easiest way to do that with your computer powered on, first thing you wanna do is just restart your computer. And I apologize. It's really hard for me to um, have one camera capturing the screen and another camera capturing me. But while your computer is restarting, you're going to want to make sure you are hitting the delete key or whichever F key your motherboard calls for to actually get into the BIOS. Um, while we're waiting for this to reboot, something I want to announce that we have launched our Spreadshop for merch and we have also launched our Patreon. I would love if you guys could take a chance to check these out. The links are down in the description and anything you buy goes straight towards the channel and lets us keep making great content for you. Uh, once you see your loading screen come up, you'll be able to go straight into the BIOS. So I have an ASUS board. The BIOS is gonna be a little different depending on whatever you have. For me with ASUS, whenever you launch into the UFE BIOS, it's gonna launch straight into easy mode. We're gonna to wanna to get out of that, so just hit F7. Um, another important note, while you can navigate with your mouse, none of your software to control your mouse is loaded, so it is really hard to navigate around. Just stick to the arrow keys of your keyboard. Once you are out of easy mode and have hit F7, just go straight over to this AI tweaker or whatever it's called in your BIOS. The first thing you want to check is under AI overclock tuner. So that's your RAM. Make sure you have Expo enabled. Um, you'll see different profiles, auto, which is just going to run you at JDEC. Uh, manual, if you are very comfortable and you want to go in there and manually tune it. But if you have an Expo or even a XMP enabled kit for Intel, you'll see one or two profiles in there uh, for us, I have tested Expo 1 and Expo 2. Expo 2 runs st stable for me, so we're gonna stick with that. So you make sure you have Expo 2, you'll see the timing. That is my actual RAM and the advertised timing. If you don't go and change that, you're just gonna run at the standard JDEX speeds. Um, forget everything that's advertised on the box, you're just getting stock settings. Once you make sure you have that, you can just scroll down you'll eventually get to a setting called Precision Boost Overdrive or PBO. So we're gonna hit enter and move into PBO. Um, you'll see mine is already set to my custom tunes, but if you wanted to do something different, you'll see you have under PBO, you have options for auto that will enable your motherboard auto AI overclocking. ASUS is actually really good, so you can get really good performance results if you just leave it in auto. Um, disabled is going to run you at standard stock settings from AMD or Intel if you have Intel. Um, enabled will put you straight into your standard performance boost overdrive, which decided that they can do to push the chip. Um, but for us, we're going to stick with manual because that's where we do our custom tuning. So you'll scroll down to manual, hit that, and you'll see some numbers pop up that weren't there before. So you have PPT, TDC, EDC. You don't need to worry about what these mean. If you're a novice and you're just jumping into this, I can make a more detailed video going into what each setting is for later. If you want, just let me know down in the comments. I would gladly do it. But the, the manual setting that I showed you in the last video, I had PPT set at 169. TDC at 125 and EDC at 187. Another important note, ASUS rolls with whole number. Some board will show you milliwatts. So 169, for example, maybe one, uh, 169,000 on your motherboard. 
just check your motherboard's um, instruction manual or their support channel and it'll let you know exactly how to handle it. So for us, we have PPT at 169, 125. Oop, we did not mean to scroll off of that. 169, 125, 187. The next thing you wanna go down to is your curve optimizer. So scroll down a little bit, you'll see curve optimizer. You'll hear a lot of people just say CO, same thing. So you have a couple of ways that you can optimize once you're in here, you can do all core, which I highly recommend if you are a novice or a beginner. You also have the option to do per core tweaking. Uh, per, tour, per core tweaking can give you great results, but you're gonna spend a lot of time testing, rebooting, testing again. Um, and for some of us, that is awesome. Like that's what we geek out over. I love tweaking mine per core, seeing exactly how hard you can push the chip. But for this demonstration, we're gonna leave it on all core. You want your optimizer sign at negative. So we are trying to see how much we can push our clock with less voltage, not more. So we're gonna leave that on negative. And then here you have your optimizer magnitude. So that is how hard it can push in millivolts. I have mine set at 10. You can go much more aggressive than this. Um, the issue that I found with my chip, and this is very individual to the silicon that you have in your machine. Some are better, some are worse. I can push higher and get it to run stable but this is my editing rig. And one thing I've noticed that anything above negative 10, um, Adobe programs, especially Premiere, which is my main video editing software, um, tends to get a little unstable at anything higher. I've pushed it to negative 12, 13, 14, 15, and I get a lot of crashes. Once I get above 15, it's almost an instant crash. When I launch it, it shuts down. So for me, negative 10 is fine. So I'm gonna leave it at negative 10. Once you have all of your settings set, you're just gonna hit F10 and save. So we're gonna back up for a second and just show you if you wanted to run an eco mode, which again, for a beginner, I absolutely recommend just sticking with the stock settings. For the most part, they are great. If you have a 7950X like I do, Going back to your PBO, flipping it over to eco mode, you're gonna see your options for eco mode right here. So you'll have um, 65 watt eco mode, you're basically crippling your chip, 105 watt and 170. So 170 is the stock setting. You're not gonna see any changes there. At 105 watt eco mode, you can switch to this, make no other changes and your chip is gonna run near stock levels at significantly less power and temperature. Um, I do recommend if you're comfortable going in and use those manual settings that I showed you, they're gonna give you a TDP, which if you remember is basically a fake number, but they'll give you a TDP around 125, um, which means your chip's gonna max out around 169, 170 watts, uh, which is where your PPT comes into play. So once you have everything set like you want, we're going back to manual because I am not changing mine. You're gonna hit F10. F10 allows you to exit and save. You see for me, it shows that there were no changes made because we are literally going right back to what I had it set to when I booted up. Hit okay. Give it a second. Your PC is gonna reboot and it's gonna launch with the settings that you have. If you played around and you got a little too aggressive and you moved into something that your chip can't handle, you'll probably see a crash pretty quickly. Uh, but once you reboot, you're gonna wanna run some type of benchmarking program, whether it's Cinebench or if you wanna stress test it, Ida64, and see if your system still runs stable. I'm not gonna do that. I know for a fact that these settings, my system is gonna run stable all day long. And it's literally, that simple. There's no need to overcomplicate it. Modern chips have gotten really good with being able to handle these basic changes and come back online stable. There you go. You'll see we boot it right back up in the windows. We're ready to rock and roll. It's that simple, guys. Don't let all these um, 
jargon terms like PPT, EDC, TDC, Curve Optimizer. Don't let that scare you. These are just simple tweaks you can go in your BIOS and make less than five minutes and have your PC running at its optimal performance, what your chip can actually do. Don't leave money on the table. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content, and as always, thanks for watching.